for questions for coach. Uh, right here over to the right, Austin Ward. Rivals, 97.1. Ryan, I know it's a four-quarter game, so you do get credit for figuring out Iowa later on, but what did you think about the offensive execution there for, I don't know, quarter and a half, two quarters, especially in the red zone? Yeah, um, an interesting game when you when you start off with so many balls and plus territory there. You know, you look at uh, at the end of the game um, where the score could even been different, you know. Um, but, you know, Iowa does a very, very good job up front, and you know, they take away so many things in the middle. And force you to really, you know, throw the ball. And, um, you know, we, we didn't do as good of a job uh, executing running the ball early on. But we knew that it was going to take time to crack. It's just the way they are. And um, and so uh, I thought we played really, um, you know, good football there in the second half. Got a good, good bounds going a little bit. But, I mean, that, that kind of goes back to what we're talking about, you know, is when someone's going to stop one thing, you got to be able to do the other. And um, I would have liked to definitely execute it better on offense uh, early in the game. But I think the story is about the defense and how well they played. But... Um, but good to finally pull away there in the second half. Over to the left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Ryan, it looked like Jackson tweaked something there, and then we didn't see him come back in the game. Just any updates you have on his Yeah, case. he was on a pitch count today, and then once he got uh, to a certain number there, we decided to shut him down. Uh, over over here to the right, Dylan Davis, Delaware the, the Gazette. For an offense that's been humming along like it has, is there something to be said for winning a game like this where you just kind of had to grind and keep at it and keep at it and finally things start to open up? Is there that, that, yeah, that's it. I mean, that, and that's, that's – um, I guess not what we're used to here, but uh, that's the reality of it. And, um, you know, certainly the, the fact that there was 56 points on the board, a big part of that was the defense today. But, um, you know, when you're playing against a really good defense, a top 10 defense, it's not just going to happen all at once. You know, it's not going to be fireworks every series. But, um, you know, I, I give uh, Noah credit. We were able to put points on the board and keep that momentum going. And uh, we felt like our defense was playing well. And, and um, we felt like if we had scored, you know, a few of those touchdowns on there in the red zone, it would have been a different first half. But um, but but that's okay. A lot to learn from there and grow. Uh, over to the left, Dan Hope, 11, 11 Warriors. Yeah, Ryan, it seems like Zach Harrison came out with a lot of energy today. Is that something you noticed too? And just yeah. what do you make of the way that he played today? Yeah, I, I think he was one of a, uh, a few guys who played with that type of energy. I thought uh, Zach's playing some of his best football right now. And um, our defensive line, you know, they're playing with an edge. Uh, I think you can feel it out there. You can see how fast they're playing. Uh, but Zach has uh, really come along. He's practiced really well. I thought his leadership's been good, and um, I think you guys would agree he's probably playing his best football right now. Over to the right, Bill Landis, Rivals. Ryan, you guys um, had to burn a couple timeouts down in the short red area on, on offense. Just w in those moments, what, what's happening? Like, what are you seeing? And then when you're on the sideline talking it out, what are those conversations like? And what did you think of the execution coming out of those moments? Well, um, you know, I get frustrated with myself uh, first because, um, you know, there's just so many uh, scenarios you try to go through down there. And we had a bunch of at-bats down there. And um, it's hard. They do an excellent job in the red zone. Historically, they've done a great job. And, you know, you try to get exactly the right call uh, based on the hash, based on where it is. And um, certainly in the first half, uh, you know, I think sometimes those, those timeouts are a little overrated because, you, you know, typically you don't need them as much as you do in the second half. So uh, when you're down in the red zone, if you have the right play, good. If you don't, uh, I think historically I've, um, you know, we've decided to take timeouts if we didn't feel like we didn't have a really good look there. Uh, one in particular, we had a good play up. It wasn't the look we expected. There was a guy coming off the edge, and we knew we had a bad play called, so we got out of it. Um, another time, you know, we just wanted to think about it a little bit more. Another time, uh, Jackson, um, I think the ball was on the ground maybe, and there was a pile up on the ground. And, um, you know, they, they, they rewound the clock at 25, but it went really fast. And so by the time they got it, we looked up, it was like at 12 seconds, and I just didn't feel like at that time we wanted to run a play that wasn't a good play. And, um, you know, my fault, but... I always, you know, in those moments, I know how important those, those moments are. We know how those important those moments are. We always want to get them, you know, on the right call. We work so hard for that, you know, that, um, and so mostly I just get frustrated with myself. Over to the left, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Brian, by his standards, CJ had a so so first half, and he throws the pick on the first play of the second half. Then he, Got it together. I think it was eight straight completions, four touchdowns. What what clicked for him in the second half? I think we just had to get into a rhythm on offense. And um, when when you game plan, you know, you, you pretty much start your, your mindset on the minus 25, somewhere in there. And then you have plays that you work, and then you kind of get yourself into the red zone. And um, it was weird because we were kind of in plus territory all day early on. It just never got into a rhythm of just kind of throwing things and because the field was getting a little compressed. And I think you saw when we had to move the ball down the field, we were a little bit better, and he got into a rhythm that way. That's probably the only way I could uh, describe why that was. But um, 
yeah, I mean, they're very, very good. They get their hands on balls. Um, you know, we had the, the one sack fumble early on, you know, I mean, it, but we, we, over, we overcame it and we kept pushing through and we know that when we're playing against good defenses, things like that happen. But we can't continue to let those things happen. We've got to learn from them and grow. Uh, but I think it was healthy for us to get a good challenge today. Over to the right, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Ryan, the Iowa offense is what it is, but is there something to be said for your defense to be able to do what good defenses do against an offense like this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, started right from the get-go, and I thought we were aggressive. Uh, I thought Jim called a great game, but the guys played well. They ran to the ball, created turnovers, played hard, played physical, and, um, and, and you know, didn't let up the whole game. And uh, I, I think we had, what, six turnovers and a, like at least a couple fourth down stops. So, um, you know, when we can play like that, it's great. So, got to learn what we did well and figure out what we need to improve on, and uh, we know we got a big challenge next week going to State College. Uh, fourth row uh, middle in the left, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, back to uh, Zach for a minute. Here's a kid who's a local kid. He comes in, a lot of pressure, playing in the shadow of the Bosa's chase. Uh, is this just one of these situations you always talk about, everyone has their own journey? How proud are you of him to you know, get through that, fight through that? Well, uh, very. Um, it started with, with recruiting. Uh, Zach was one of the, the first recruits. Um, you know, for me and, and Larry, we went into the home and um, I'll tell a quick funny story about that. Um, wasn't sure how it was going to go in recruiting. I, I just been named the head coach and, and Larry and I went into the home and Tracy and the family were there and went through the home visit and I, and I gave him a Buckeye at the end and I said, this is a Buckeye, I want you to have this. And he says, well, he looks at me, looks at it, he says, you know, Buckeyes are poisonous, coach. <laughs> and I said, I, I walked out, I said, Larry, we ain't getting Zach. <laughs> And uh, about a week later, Larry comes in. I remember where I was because it was a very important for us because Zach was highly recruited. He was a local kid, Olin Tangy Orange. Obviously, a tremendous talent um, and a great culture fit for us. And, um, and uh, Larry walks in. He says, Zach's going to be a Buckeye. He got him on the phone and he committed. And it was, that was a big deal for us. And, you know, he came in highly recruited. Um, but you know, he, when you look at Zach, he's, he's got long levers. You know, he's really tall, and he's had to grow into the position and grow into his body. And that doesn't just happen; it takes time. And I know everybody wants him to come in and, and you know be an All-American as a freshman. But everybody, like you said, has their own journey, and he's been on that journey. And I think he's made a lot of sacrifices. He's worked through some tough times, and um, and you're seeing the best version of him right now. We're going to go just a few marks. we got players starting to come up over here to the right. Justin Holbrock, WCMH. What did you see from uh, Jordan Hancock, his first game back, especially with Cam Brown out today? Yeah, I saw a good week of practice and then uh, made a few plays. Uh, and he does a really good job of playing the ball and uh, excited to get that uh, game under his belt so that uh, we can build on that moving forward. Uh, over to the left, Cameron Teague Robinson, The Athletic. Ryan, you, you mentioned calling some timeouts in the red zone. I mean, you guys have been really in the red zone all year. When you look at this game, do you look at it as like, hey, we still scored even though we kicked those field goals? Or do you look at it like, we need to turn those field goals into touchdowns even though we're scoring? Touchdowns, touchdowns. That, that's it. That's all we focus on. Now, when we can get field goals, certainly we need to get points, and, and those were important to get. But, yeah, um, you know, I'm going to wish we had calls back. We're going to wish we had plays back. But the, the number one goal is to score touchdowns in a red zone. That's a huge part of our plan to win. Uh, we've been good in that in the past. Um, not as good today. Uh, over to the right, Clay Hall, WSYX. Multiple choice. Tommy Eichenberg, he's been a great tackler today. He's a pass catcher. Mm -hmm. Do you need more from the running game as you go forward? That was a concern late in the year last year. What, how about the run, the run game? Yeah, oh, yeah. we'll have to look and see, see what we did well, but what we, we need to improve on um, and, and where we need to uh, you know, tighten up um, and you know, kind of evaluate it from there. Certainly the numbers don't look great, uh, but there were some good things, and I think there was, um, there was a sack, right? So, I mean, that, that may have affected that, you know, on the, on the fumble. So, um, again, we'll look at it, assess it, and figure out where it's at. But, um, you know, we want to be balanced. But, but are you not concerned because of so much talent in the receiving core? I don't know if concern is the right thing, but, you know, we're going to have to go back and figure out how we run the ball better. That's for sure. Um, and figure out how we're going to do that. But, uh, but that's every week. You know, we're going to find out how to throw the ball better. Let's figure out how to, um, you know, score points in a red zone better. That's, that's every week. But uh, to say I'm concerned, I wouldn't say that. But uh, we're going to need better play moving forward. Uh, over to the left, uh, last one on the left, Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, 
you touched on some of the turnovers. Early in the year, you guys weren't getting those. You've now gotten them pretty consecutively. And then obviously the big breakout today. How important is to have that start rolling as you get into this late stretch of the season here? Yeah, it's very important. And like you said, the challenges are going to get bigger and bigger. And so um, you know, we need um, – you know, we we need balance across the board. We need complementary football. We need special teams. We, you know, we need we need everything. We need it all of the above. But, but again, this this is a very good team coming in here. You know, they they played um, a team up north really well. It was twenty to seven in the fourth quarter. Uh, they played Illinois really well. You know, they had the fumble return to go win the game. They called it back, and, and Illinois kicks the field goal to win the game. The, you know, Illinois, you know, uh, had a really good year. They played some good teams, and uh, we we had a lot of respect for this team coming in, and. Um, and, and they played well, especially on defense. And um, so for us to win like this, it's good, but there's still a lot to, lot to improve on and uh, a lot to grow from, like you said. Last two for Coach, we're going to go Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com, and then Tim May, Letterman Row on three. I just want to clarify, like Jackson came out of the game. It seemed like he was really stretching that leg out. He was talking to medical personnel. So that route was going to be his last route that he ran today. I just wanted to clarify that. And can you – Talk about, I guess, just were you able to evaluate him enough today as to what you saw from him, how he moved, that sort of thing? I think so. Yeah, I, I think we'll be able to evaluate it. We'll watch the film and see. But we had about 20 plays. I think he was right in that range. And um, once he got to that number and that drive, that was it. Brad, what's it like to have an offense at your disposal that you're trying to crack that safe first half? You know, and I know you call the plays you think are going to work. Right. That's right. Well, uh, Tommy scored one of those, so uh, we'll give Tom, yeah, we'll give Tommy credit for that one. Um, but no, I, mean, I think it all went to the defense and the way the defense put the offense in a great position to score. Um, but but it was it was a strange game that way because there were so many turnovers and we were plus territory, just didn't finish the drives. But um, you know, I don't know how many times we punted. Um, looked like we punted three times. One was at the end, so. Uh, kind of strange, you know, when you look at it. We didn't have a lot of drives that started like on the 20 yard line and we moved them across the field. But, uh, but to answer your question, um, you know, it's we have great weapons. We have to continue to figure out ways to find that balance. Um, we got to continue to practice well so that we can execute well because these plays and, um, you know, these matchup games are going to become more and more important. And so the Marge Fair is going to be tinier and tiny. But you always feel there's something on that sheet that's going to work eventually. Is that the way you personally go into a game like this? That something on that play sheet's going to work? Well, I, I think, you know, it's like if they're taking this away, then they, they probably are giving up something here. And they certainly were doing a great job stopping the run. So typically, you know, they, they have to give up something on the perimeter. And, um, and, and I think we, we found that there in the third, fourth quarter. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, folks.